I'm Dr Deborah Stevens and I'm the Medical Director of Cornwall Hospice Care. What I would just like to talk about is the fact that we are an organisation that is much bigger than the two buildings that everybody immediately identifies with. So of course the cornerstone of what we do is, is the inpatient care and that is what people know and people recognise. But we actually do a lot more than that. We are the specialists in this area and so our specialist, specialism and expertise is used to the best effect to make the most difference to the most people and that's what we want to do as a charity. So if I talk you through some of the activities that go on outside the two inpatient units that we're actively involved with, um, for example, all of our consultants um, do an oncology clinic jointly with the oncologist in the Royal Cornwall Hospital. So they're seeing patients who have a cancer diagnosis and they're advising on symptom control and they're giving emotional support. And as and when the time is right, they're introducing them to the hospices and the care that we can give there if it's appropriate. And we will see hundreds of patients each year in that forum. We're also part of an integrated pain and palliative care service. In that clinic, which is held weekly, uh, people are jointly reviewed by a consultant in palliative care and a pain consultant. Uh, they all get expert advice um, and they can have procedures done if that's what they need. And again, that clinic will see hundreds of people in a year who don't ever maybe cross the doors of the hospice units. We're an essential part of the community team, so, so we're supporting all the nurses who go in and see people in their own homes day in, day out, across the year. Um, what we do is we will visit people in their own homes, nursing homes, community hospitals, the acute hospitals, if people want a consultant review and that's felt it would be helpful. But what we also do is, is support in, a, in a, a specialist team discussion about those patients so that we make sure that everybody's getting the right care at the right time and in the right place. And again, over the last year, we've supported the care of 1,400 patients in this county, um, which, you know, some of them may never need to come in or they're at a stage in their illness where they don't need us now, but we will be there when they do need us. So what I kind of like to think is that, that we're providing a safety net which will catch people when they fall, but is, is, is populated by specialists and by experts. But what we also have is um, an education role, which is very important. We provide formal education to medical students in their fourth year at the Exeter Medical School. They spend eight weeks with us and we're teaching them the basics of good care, uh, which can count for any kind of medical care, but is particularly important for patients at the end of their life. We we are involved in education of other healthcare professionals in the widest sense. So in the last year, we had a, a grant of £35,000 to run a, an education project, which was to get the same one, one single sheet of paper with, with guidance of how to use anticipatory drugs to manage distressing symptoms in all care settings. And we rolled that tool out and it is now in widespread use across the county. And in the process of doing that, one single tool that's used in every care setting, which is fantastic, we trained over a thousand healthcare professionals. We're actively looking uh, over the next few months at how we can increase our, our input into the community. The beds will be there for the people who really need them. And we also know that there are particular groups of patients for whom the hospice is really not the right environment. Patients with advanced dementia who are dying are perfectly entitled to best possible symptom control and care at the end of their illness. What we know with patients with dementia is that moving where they are, changing the people around them is massively disorientating and increases their distress. So for the patients who need to be kept safe and secure, we've actually done a lot of work over the last few week, years about promoting a hospice within a secure unit and we provide that outreach service. So when people look at our figures, it looks as though a lot of our patients only have cancer, but that's because other subsections of patients with specialist needs are being looked after by other ways. I am Cornwall Hospice Care.